So you're thinking, what? Well, how can a video be filled up by one question? Well, actually, there's a whole bunch more to talk about. So let's get this done with. First of all, I wanted to mention um, that when you look at the time series graph, it can get a little crammed down here on the horizontal axis with years especially. So what you can do is you can format the axis and go to alignment. I right clicked, by the way, on those numbers and format access alignment and I changed it. It was originally horizontal, which you can see how they call it, kind of all bleed together. And I changed it to rotate all text 270 degrees. That's just me. I wanted it kind of um, easier to read. You can play around with it. You can make different angles, whatever. I also labeled the tab food stamps rather than sheet four or whatever it was called. So that's a good thing. All right, now here it is. And you can say, okay, well, it was really low in the early 70s. Um, we hit some spikes here in the mid early 80s and mid 90s, around 10% each. I wrote that up right there. And then there was a low p spot, around 6% in the early 2000s. And then we hit another really big spike in 2009, 2010. Um, so high that in 2010, it's 13%, which is meaning that 13% of Americans need some kind of food stamp assistance during the year 2010, which is a lot, very high. And I want to just mention real quickly that when I write a question like this, it's kind of misleading because you could talk about graphs like this for days, weeks, months. I mean, you could have a podcast about it like Planet Money does, or you could write articles about it like the Wall Street Journal. I mean, whole economists spend their careers talking about graphs like this. So you can generally find a whole bunch of information. But as a stat student, you just kind of want to look for some big ideas, spikes, dips, that kind of thing. Okay. Now remember, some of you have to submit this Excel file to your instructors. So let's clean it up just a little bit. Um, we've got the M&M &M data over here. I changed this one. It said not, um, games played before. But this is really the games played for the 11 um, 12 players so far, so that the players that are playing in 2010, 2011. And then we had the stats exam grades, then the average points. And remember, this one did double duty for us. We used this in both 2-2, and then we expanded it in 2-3 and made more um, rows and made different graphs. So we used that one. It did double duty. Let's put it that way. Then we had the average points ones where we found the um, average points per game and found histograms. That's good. Then we had the grades where we had to insert a text box to put in the stem and leaf plot. And then this one, this is games played for, um, well, at the time I'm making this video, this is last year's basketball team. This is this year's basketball team. So this, this season's not done. This is last season, so it is isn't done. Now we made a dot plot and we kind of inserted it in there. I think I called this um, games played or something like that before, or number of games. But to be fair, this is games played for 11, 12 that we worked in, and this is games played we did for 10 and 11. And at the time, I don't know what I was thinking, but I had the stem and leaf plot um, for this data set for games stuck in the grades spreadsheet. So I pulled that out of there. It's right here, right? I typed it in. Or you could just, and I'll, I'll show you this, um, you could insert a text box. So I could go insert text box, click and drag. There we go. And we had made that graph way back here, ah, page 15. There it is. We made it with um, StatCrunch. So you could either copy and paste it out of your Word file if you put it in your Word file, or you can go to StatCrunch. I have it right here. And I can copy and then take it back to Excel. Oops, not there. There it is. And just paste it in like that. So there. Now I've got those two graphs together for a number of games, the dot plot and the stem and leaf plot of that. And then I've got the food stamps graph. And then, of course, I'm going to save this file, right? Make sure it's the most recent file that I'm emailing my instructor. And then I'll close it. And I'll just close Excel entirely. Close that, too. And I'll go to my um, lovely um, email program. And I'll email my instructor, who happens to be myself. And I'll say the Chapter 2 Excel video sheet spreadsheet and then I'll click on the little paper clip and attach the file and every so every email program is going to be slightly different but it'll all work on the same basic themes it'll be a paper clip and I'll attach the file and then I'll send it and then my instructor will have it and be able to grade it if your instructor requires it all right we're done with 2.3 I'll see you back here for 2.4